Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. So today we're on our next lesson, which I think is lesson 12 in our Learning SAS for Beginners series. And we're going to cover Proc Tabulate. This is an awesome procedure to make pretty reports. And we're gonna go through the very basics of this procedure. But as always, I will link the SAS documentation for this procedure in the description below. We are going to use SAS On Demand for Academics, which is a free interface that you can sign up for online so that you can practice SAS programming. And I'm also gonna link that very first video in the description below. So let's get started with prop tabulate. So the first thing is the syntax, okay? So this procedure, as I mentioned, makes prettier reports than just the basic SAS output proceed, um, output report, okay? So this table producing language was created in part by the US Department of Labor. You still see a lot of prop tabulate in healthcare and finance fields. And the syntax is down below. So you're gonna have your prop tabulate with your data set that you're reading in. The class statement is going to have categorical classification variables. And then you're gonna have this table statement. And this table statement is gonna list three variables, one that's gonna be for the page, one for the row, and one for the columns. Now, by default, you only need one variable in the table statement in order for this procedure to work, but it must be the same variables that are either listed in your class or a var statement. So we'll get to that momentarily. Let's first start off with the class statement. So the class statement is your categorical data. It's how it's gonna group the rows in your data set. By default, it will return all your group counts for vars that are listed in the class statement. So if you list, for instance, league in the class statement, it's going to return all of the different leagues in your data set with the number of rows that corresponds to each league. And we're gonna see an example of that momentarily. From the class statement, there is the table statement, and that's how you organize your table. So there's one table per table statement that would be produced, but you can have multiple table statements within one prop tabulate, okay? So one table per table statement, and it tells SAS, what variable is going to be the page dimension, what variable is going to be for the rows, and what variable is going to be for the column. So we're going to see an example of that momentarily as well. So just as I mentioned, there are dimensions, and it tells us what variables to use for these three dimensions. If you specify just one dimension in the table statement, it'll automatically assume that that dimension is your column and it will break out your data set into the different levels among multiple columns. If you specify just two, it's going to read that as your rows and your columns, but no pages. So that was a lot to go over. So let's really quick talk about missing values. So by default, if any of the observations in your data set have missing values within the variables that are listed in the class statement, they are excluded from the table unless you add the keyword missing after the procedure, okay? In that same procedure statement. All right, so let's look at an example. So like I said, one variable is gonna automatically break that out in columns. So as you can see within this SAS code, and everyone has access to this data set, so you can try typing this into your own SAS on demand for academics. We read in the SAS help.baseball data set, the class is division, and the table that we wanna print out is division, okay? So it's going to break out each level of the division, which there are two levels within division, the East Division and the West Division, and it's gonna to return to us the number of populated rows that correspond to each division. So that's what that big N stands for. It stands for the count. So in this output, we see that our 157 observations or rows that are in the East Division, and there's 165 observations or rows that are in the West Division. So by default, if you only list one variable in the table statement, that would be your column dimension. So what about two variables? So let's see the output of that. 
So if you list two variables, by default, it's going to be the rows and the columns, okay? So in this example, once again, our class is division and league. We've added another class. And the table statement, the rows are going to be division and the columns are going to be the actual league. And it's going to return the counts within each one of those breakouts. So as we can see in the American East division, there are 85 rows in our data set. In the American West division, there are 90 rows in our data set. In the National East division, there are 72 rows. And in the National West, there are 75 rows. So once again, if you only mention two variables in the table statement, that would be your rows and your columns. Once again, as a reminder, you can only put in the table statement the same variables that you have in your class statement and or var statement. So let's look at example three, okay? So if three variables are listed in the table statement by default, that would be the page, row, and column. So here we have division, league, and team. Okay, so the whole page is going to be the division, the league is going to be the rows, and the teams is going to be the columns in this example. So in the output, you can see that the first page is for the East Division, is broken out by American and National, and then each one of the teams are the columns, and it tells us each one of those how many observations in the data set correspond to that. So Baltimore team in the East Division in the American League have 15 rows in the data set. Cleveland, on the other hand, in the American League in the East Division have 12 rows. Okay, so it's going to go through and actually create a page, row, and columns. So what about the summary statistics? So by default, as I mentioned above or in the previous slides, it's going to return an N, which is a count. So it's gonna tell you how many rows correspond to the actual breakout of the categorical variable that you called in the class statement. So by default, it's gonna say that, hey, the vision is broken out into East and West. And within East, we have 157 rows or in and we have 165 for the west okay but you can also add in other things outside of just the count okay so as you can see you can have max you can have the mean you can have the number of missing values standard deviation sum very 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 similar to proc means okay so you're going to be able to use some of those same keywords in your table statement as you can in proc means and it talks about concatenating, crossing, and grouping these. So if I use the all keyword, it's just going to add subtotals, okay? It's gonna add a row with the subtotals and a column with the subtotals, okay? I can also do the mean price, okay? And I denote that by an asterisk. So mean multiplied by price, or I can also do a summary statistic based off of two categories, right? So the percentage of observations by type in vessel. So an example of that would be what I have here. So in this example, I want to have the all keyword at the end of division, okay? So I, at, for the division variable, I want to list the subtotals, okay? Also for the league variable, I want to list the subtotals. So I have subtotals on every row and for every column. And then I want to do the mean number of outs by league, okay? And it's also gonna break it out by division since I have division already stated on my rows. So let's see how that looks like in SAS Studio. So once again, Proc Tabulate, as I mentioned, you have access to this data set. You just hit libraries on the left-hand side, expand my libraries, expand SAS Help, and then you have baseball, okay? So when you expand baseball, you can see all of the different variable names. So if you were to run this basic proc tabulate, you would get an output and it would have the number of observations for each league broken out by each division, 
Okay. So a little bit more fancier than just general output. If you want to do summary statistics, so remember in my example, I had the division variable and I wanted to list all of the subtotals. Now I have this var statement that that only captures numeric variables. So the variable that I want to look at is in outs. Remember, I can only use variables in the table statement that I have already listed in the class and var statement. So if I want to look at some summary statistics about the number of outs, I have to add a var statement to specify that in order for it to show up in my table. So now I'm saying, hey, give me the mean number of outs and let's do this by league and let's also get the subtotals for the league. And let's put that in a nice pretty table. So here I have the mean number of outs for each league, okay? So the mean number of outs is 287 for the East American League slash division. And the mean number for the East entirely is 290. The mean number of outs for the West entirely is 287. And the mean number of outs in the data set entirely is 288. Okay, so what if I did something like this? If I just have the mean number of outs and I did that by league and division, what is it going to give me? When I run this, I see that it only gives me the columns, right? Because remember, if you specify just one variable and, and SAS reads this as one variable because there is no commas, it's going to break out everything into columns. So it's going to have the mean number of outs by league and division in its own separate column. And I see that it has the league of American and national, and it has the, league, the division of east and west. And it's giving me those subtotals that we saw in the previous output. So that, in a nutshell, is proc tabulate. I know that was a lot to digest, but pretty much this procedure is great if you want to make pretty reports. Keep in mind that in your table statement, you can only utilize variables that you have already specified in your class or var statement. Also keep in mind that there are summary statistics that you can output in these reports that are very similar to proc means. I'm going to add the documentation for this procedure in the description below. And I'm also going to link to how you can set up this nice SAS Studio interface so that you can practice your SAS programming along with us. So please like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for tuning in with Learning with Jelly. Bye-bye.